Dan Jacobs, last time I saw you, I think it was at the Thurman fight. We spoke very briefly, but the conversation was on the possibility of a rehydration clause that Canelo might have implemented outside of whatever IBF stuff was going right, on. Right. So, so, is there any details on that? Any updates? Well, uh, De La Hoya and, and Golden Boy has put that into the contracts because normally the IBF has the second day weigh in, mm -hmm. but under these rules, with this unification. What's going on guys, your boy Boxing Facts or Fix. I need you guys to do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification icon for more videos like this. This is an interview of Daniel Jacobs. I'm going to go ahead and break this interview down. Daniel Jacobs talks about the rehydration clause and the fact that he feels like he don't have to knock out Canelo, which I believe is 100% ridiculous. And I feel like by Jacob saying that, I think Jacob is going out there to sell his belt. We all know it's hard to get a decision against Canelo Alvarez, not because Canelo Alvarez is an exceptional elite fighter, but because Canelo Alvarez is the second biggest star and makes a lot of money, brings in a lot of money. I mean, he's the only guy you can put on pay-per-view, a young guy right now, and is going to do a lot of money, Canelo Alvarez. But um, Daniel Jacobs is under the influence that for some reason he doesn't need to knock out Canelo Alvarez. But first, we got to get into... But first, we must talk about this rehydration clause that was set in place by Golden Boy in the uh, unification rules. Um, if you guys are not familiar, J.O. Jacobs, when he fought Gennady Golovkin, he didn't show up for the second day weigh-in. His explanation was he had to. <laughs> his explanation was he he had to rest his body. <laughs> so a lot of people believe he came into the Triple G fight overweight. So Golden Boy implement that into uh, the contract. So I'm not sure why. Maybe they can have some form of advantage. But for me, true champions don't put, you know, stipulations and contracts like that to get a little advantage. Or even though I'm the bigger guy, you're in my division. So I have no true gain over you, even though I have the physical abilities. Mm -hmm. And I might be a longer or bigger or rangier fighter, but we're still the same weight. And if I can come into the ring 100, so can he. Either way, you're fully prepared on any way because the thing an IBF champion, if, if you were fighting somebody else, the next day weigh in, you would have to not exceed. I did it in my last fight. I did yeah. it in a Sergey Dervinchenko fight for IBF championship because it wasn't a unification. So I followed by the rules. And the reason why I said before with the Golovkin, we didn't go by the rules or we didn't go to the second day weigh-in was because I wanted to get more rest. I had a hard time sleeping prior to. And then if you beat Golovkin, you are considered guys in my opinion i 100 percent disagree with daniel jacobs daniel jacobs he talks about the rehydration clause he says it is an advantage for uh canelo alvarez and oscar de la jolla how is it an advantage if you guys are in the same weight class no that's just a precaution because you want to blow up and come into the ring and cheat if you if you don't want to fight at 160 go fight at 168 or 175 you don't have to blow up after the weigh-in this guy is talking about Canelo Alvarez need the advantage. No, my friend, you need the advantage. You want to blow up and wait. So it's a good thing Canelo Alvarez has that rehydration clause. If you're a 160 pound fighter, you need to come in at 160. So don't talk about weighing 175. Focus on weighing 160 fight night. Because it seems like you're the guy that want the advantage, not Canelo Alvarez. You already have the advantage on size, reach, length, all of that. You have the advantage. I don't know about skills. I think Canelo Alvarez is the much better skilled fighter. He's faster. And in my opinion, he might be a heck of a lot quicker than Daniel Jacobs. Um, and Daniel Jacobs is 33 years old, so he's on his way out. Canelo's only 28 years old. He has a long way to go. And to take, like take a, yeah, so it, uh, what people also don't realize is that you have to pay sanctioning fees. And fighting for five belts, I mean, certain percentage, you can do the math, it's a lot of money. So for me, it was a lot of things combined to make me make that decision. It wasn't to get a, uh, that wasn't even my mentality. I wasn't even thinking to get a, a physical edge or to gain more weight. That wasn't really what I was thinking at all. I was just thinking, I can get more, relax, 
I don't have to get up at seven, eight o'clock in the morning to do a second day weigh in. I can just eat healthy and get ready for the fight. And that was my mentality. I hate the fact that it created all this controversy, but at the end of the day, I'm a fair fighter. I've never cheated. I've never, <laughs> I play by the rules. Okay. Let's just say it like that. And I'm gonna make sure that uh, May 4th, Cinco de Mayo weekend, when that bell rings, I'm gonna put everything into my hands. Speaking of which, playing by the rules, a lot has been made about Canelo. So Daniel Jacobs is trying to convince the audience that he plays by the rules. How do you play by the rules but you miss a second day weigh-in because you wanted to rest? In my opinion, that's very unprofessional. I look at Daniel Jacobs as a professional person. I felt like there's no excuse in when it came to the Gennady Golovkin fight. He just wanted the advantage. He just needs to come up and flat out just tell us he wanted the advantage instead of saying he wanted to get more rest. I don't agree with that. If you're as professional as you portray yourself to be, you should have been there for the second day weigh-in. Um, you was having lack of sleep. It don't matter. It's your job. That's like me saying, oh, I'm tired. I don't want to go to work today. So I'm going to take the day off. Is that a, is that a good, enough, good enough excuse to take the day off and not go to work and get my paycheck because I felt tired? The guy wasn't sick. The guy wasn't sick. It's not like he he suffered an injury. It's not like he's sick. He just said he was tired. He wanted more rest. That makes no sense in my book. But hey, to each his own, right? But according to Daniel Jacobs, that's why he missed the second day weigh-in for Gennady Golovkin. In my opinion, I felt like he just wanted the advantage. Like he said, Gennady Golovkin, if you beat Gennady Golovkin, you were going to etc. What testing is being put into place for this fight? Well, we're doing random drug testing with Vada, which is uh, the people who actually caught Canelo with the Cambuterol and all of that different stuff. So we have things are in effect. I actually got tested randomly about two, three days ago. So it's gonna, it's happening. Have you ever failed a drug test? Now? I've never failed a drug test, and I don't plan on failing a drug test. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. Jacob. If I would knock out to Canelo, it's only because I want to. I don't feel pressure. I don't feel pressure from the public. I don't. I'm. I'm at this stage in my life and in my career where I just. I do me and I do what I learned to do inside that ring from the game plans that me and my trainer has set forth in the gym. I don't allow the crowd boos or the crowd cheers to change me. If anything, the Mexican cheers is probably going to make me want to do a little bit more because I thrive off of that energy and I thrive off of the crowd. In my opinion, Daniel Jacobs likes to contradict himself. Um, one instance, he talks about the Mexican crowd probably making him want to knock want to do a little bit more but he's saying he don't feel like he needs to knock out Canelo Alvarez before that he talks about Canelo Alvarez filling a drug test for Clembuterol he talks about drug testing he said he got drug tested two or three days ago he talks about drug testing he's, he said he, he uh, never filled a drug test before he, get drug te he got drug tested two or three days ago and what really made me say wow or shocked me was the fact that Daniel Jacobs blatantly told us to our face that he doesn't need to knock out Canelo Alvarez. You know what that tells me, guys? Daniel Jacobs saying he doesn't need to knock out Canelo Alvarez. He doesn't need to go in there to knock out Canelo Alvarez. We seen from the Gennady Golovkin fight. Gennady Golovkin needs to knock out Canelo Alvarez to beat him. You understand what I'm saying? He needed to knock out Canelo Alvarez to beat him. He couldn't do it. Even though I felt like Canelo Alvarez still won the first and second fight. But that's just my opinion. But anyway, but anyway, by Daniel Jacobs saying he doesn't need to knock out Canelo Alvarez, he's pretty much telling me and the rest of the boxing media, the fans, in my opinion, he's telling us he's selling the title. But he's not pretty much coming out and saying, oh yeah, I'm selling the title. He's pretty much saying, I'm going to go in there and give it my best. But I'm not going to go in there looking for the knockout. You have to go in there looking for the knockout, knowing the situation.
knowing the situation as a guy who studied boxing, if you're not going in there looking for the knockout, you're not going in there to win. If you really wanted to win this fight, you'll go into this fight trying to knock out Canelo Alvarez. Put this man out. Daniel Jacobs know he's on his way out. He's just happy to get a huge payday. So I can't be mad at Daniel Jacobs. But from what Daniel Jacobs is saying, I can't be mad at Daniel Jacobs. This is the Canelo sweepstakes. Daniel Jacobs is just happy to be in that position to get paid, to pay his family off, you know, to take care of his family, to take care, to secure his future, to get that Canelo bag. So I can't knock Daniel Jacobs for pressuring Eddie Hearn to get that fight. But I will be disappointed if Daniel Jacobs doesn't go in there and put on a show. Now I know from Daniel Jacobs, his own mouth, from what he has said, that he knows he's not going to win this fight. And he's just going in there to do his best. That's what I'm getting from Daniel Jacobs. But I will be disappointed in Daniel Jacobs if he doesn't give us a good show. You know, the outcome or it's not going to change my momentum or my game plan. How do you envision the fight? Do you see yourself as a counter puncher or is your aggressor coming into the fight? How do I envision the fight? You know, it's kind of hard. It's really hard to say how I envision the fight because Canelo has shown you different sides. If the man can't tell you how he envisioned the fight to go, you know he, he's not too sure about him winning. Because he's not winning if he doesn't knock out Canelo Alvarez. We all know that. So he needs to go in there and knock out Canelo Alvarez so there can't be no controversial decision. In my opinion, there won't be no controversial decision. It depends what Jacob shows up. But uh, in my opinion, I got Canelo Alvarez winning this fight convincingly. Maybe by a late TKO. I don't see anything Daniel Jacobs bringing to the table that's going to convince me that he has a shot of knocking Canelo Alvarez out. Especially from the way he's talking. I just don't see it, guys. If you see Canelo Alvarez losing to Daniel Jacobs, leave your comments in the comment section. But uh, I'm going to give you a warning. Do not bet on Daniel Jacobs. You're going to lose your money. But uh, do me a favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification icon for more videos like this. Canelo Alvarez wins this fight.